Welcome to Teen YPWW Lesson 6. Today's topic is giving gracefully, not grudgingly. The lesson text is coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 5 through 15, Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, Mark chapter 12, verses 42 through 44. The memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. I will read the King James Version first and then the New International Version. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. The New International Version, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Attitude can be everything and it is very important. In our memory verse, the Apostle Paul lets us know that God is concerned about our attitude when we give offerings in church. God loves a cheerful giver. Giving is a form of worship. God does not appreciate mad, sad, and reluctant people worshiping him. When you give an offering in church, God loves it when your attitude is cheerful and upbeat. The word cheerful means joyful, positive, happy, smiling, and in good spirits. Wow! Yes, some of us need an attitude check when it comes to giving. Our memory verse says that first, we must decide what we are going to give. It's your decision. Then you should not allow anyone to persuade you to give more than you had already decided to give, especially when that someone is being intimidating and pushy. When we allow these types of people to coerce us into giving against our will, our attitudes become distorted and misaligned. This is not good. It's better for us to graciously give a smaller amount and be cheerful than to give a larger amount and be mad about what we have given. The story of Ananias and Sapphira, found in Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, is the text that we will discuss next in this lesson. The couple did not give cheerfully, but grudgingly. In addition, they were not truthful about the amount that they had promised to give to the church. God was not pleased with their actions. Their lives were ended because of their dishonesty and bad attitudes toward giving. It would have been better for them to tell the truth about the amount that they were giving. They did not have to lie about their contribution to the church. Then they could have easily adjusted their attitudes from being deceitful and reluctant to being cheerful and charitable. There are several examples of graceful givers in the word of God. Let's review the story of the widow in Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 43. This time Jesus was in the temple and had sat down on the opposite side of the offering table and watched various people put their offerings on the table of the temple treasury. Several rich people threw in big amounts. Then a poor lady came in who was a widow. A widow is a woman whose spouse is dead. This poor woman's husband was dead. When she gives her offering with a graceful attitude, Jesus is amazed. She gave two copper coins worth only two cents. Immediately, Jesus calls his disciples to where he was. He wanted them to see this woman's giving spare, giving spirit before she left the temple. After his Disciples came to where he was to see this woman. He told them more about the significance of her offering. Jesus said, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. She gave with sincerity, simplicity, purity, and graciousness. She gave her offering with the right attitude. The word of God lets us know that Ananias and Sapphira did not give all that they promised to give. They agreed to give a certain amount to be seen by others, but did not give what they promised. The poor widow, however, gave all that she had secretly. What a contrast. This lesson isn't about the amount you can afford to give, but about your attitude towards giving. In the word of God, there are so many promises given to believers who give liberally. Our hope is for teen listeners to be counted in this victorious group of believers who sow and reap bountifully. Remember, you can give things other than money, like a smile, a kind word, a friendly attitude, your time, or your services. It is likely that God wants us to lead happy lives as often as we can. He does not want us upset, angry, or sad every day. 
Therefore, let's swiftly grasp the concept of giving gracefully. When you have finances to give in the offering, then give when you don't have enough to give. Pray for God to bless you to contribute the next time and keep a cheerful and happy heart. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, why do you think being cheerful about our giving is important to God? Number two, have you ever received a gift from someone who seemed mad or unhappy to give it to you? Number three, what are some strategies that you have developed to keep your heart happy during difficult times? The end. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today.